can you really get started in ham radio for less than $25? In this video, we're going to take a look at the latest version of the infamous Baofeng UV-5R. It's the UV-5R EX from Radiodity. I was taking a look on Amazon the other day and found a special price and coupon for a new version of the Baofeng UV-5R dual band VHF UHF FM handy talkie. This version is sold by Radiodity with some Radiodity branding like the RD5R DMR radio I've reviewed on this channel. If you've looked around at radios at all, you already know that the UV-5R is the handheld most hams love to hate while at the same time having several of them themselves. In its various versions, the UV-5R biggest claim to fame is its low price. Depending upon where you look, you can find one for under $30. The UV-5R EX seems to be a custom version for radiodity that falls into the same price range. As I mentioned, I got it via Amazon for under $25 with free shipping. We'll take a closer look at the radio in just a second, but first a couple of overview comments. The first thing I noticed is that the instruction manual has radiodity branding and is much better than many of the manuals accompanying Baofeng radios. It's written in a conversational style and besides describing the various functions, it provides step-by-step -step instructions for doing some of the basic functions. There is also white space on the pages, which makes following along much easier. Some manuals look like there was a contest to see who could put the most words on a page. Additionally, the included accessories add value to the kit. I was pleased to find the charging cradle included instead of a wallwart style charger with a socket hidden behind a rubber cover. It always amazes me that a $25 radio includes a cradle and a $250 radio doesn't. You can program your Baofeng radio through the keypad, but nearly everyone uses Chirp and a computer to do the initial setup chores and channel management. You'll find this radio listed in the Chirp software, but you need to set the brand to Radiodity, not Baofeng, to find the model number. The UV-5R EX sets itself apart with a more streamlined, less boxy appearance. I'll show you that in just a minute. As with other Baofeng radios, it uses an antenna with the SMA female or socket end in the antenna. If you want to use one of the popular tactical style antennas or other third-party antenna, be sure to double check the connector style before ordering. Last, it's a dual band radio, which means you can use it as a transceiver on both the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands. It has a function called dual watch, which means it can monitor the two bands simultaneously. Normally, it will transmit on the frequency where it heard the signal, but can be programmed to lock the transmit function to a specified frequency. To work satellites, you'll probably need two radios. This is a dual band, but not a full duplex radio. While we're on the topic of frequencies, this radio will tune the FRS and GMRS frequencies, which fall outside the ham bands. You can choose to listen to these frequencies, but transmitting on them is not legal with this radio. Let's take a look at what you'll get. So here we have the, uh, the box that the radio comes in. It's not very big. It's not a very big radio. So let's take a look at what we find inside. On the top tray of the box is the radio itself, and you can see that it's got, uh, you know, not quite the same boxy appearance of the original UV-5R. Uh, the various uh, buttons are bright orange in this model, the knob, uh, and then the, uh, the little LED for the flashlight and the male end of the antenna are right here along with the um, uh, rubber grommet type cover for the 
a connector if you want to plug in some of your accessories. So that's the radio. Next is the battery. It's an 1800 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Uh, again, it's a little more streamlined. And so when we get those together, just kind of lay those up in there. Press here at the top for the release catch. And it just slides together. So that gives the whole battery. Now the radio's got a pretty solid feel to it. It's not as heavy as uh, some I've had, but it's still, still uh, pretty solid and uh, it would fit well in a pocket. Next comes the antenna. This has got the socket side of the antenna there on the bottom and then just your basic little dual band rubber ducky antenna. Here's a lanyard which fits in the little um, hook on the back side of the radio. You may have seen it there just a minute ago. Uh, so if you want to keep that wrapped around your wrist or if you prefer, you can use a belt clip and the screws that uh, mount this onto the radio itself, not the battery, but onto the radio are in the radio. So you'd take them out of the radio, put this on and then screw them back in. It also comes with a little wall wart style adapter. It's got a 10 volt output uh, and then a charging cradle where you can plug the um, the charger into on the back. I'm always amazed with these little inexpensive radios. They come with charging cradles when the expensive handhelds, you have to buy them separately uh, for more than what this radio costs itself. But uh, I think that's a good value. I like charging via a cradle versus uh, plugging it into a wall socket. So that's the um, uh, the charging mechanism. Again, I think I'm going to label this since I've got several of them and they tend to use different voltages. So I'm going to make sure that I have this labeled so I'm using the right charging cradle with the right um, radio. And then the other part that comes with it is a little kind of secret agent kind of uh, a microphone and earplug. There's an ear hook here on this, a little push to talk on the microphone end here. Uh, and then it uses these uh, very common uh, dual plug kinds of connectors. It's got a three and a half and a two and a half uh, millimeter uh, plugs that, and they fit into holes behind the grommet that I pointed out to you on the right side of the radio. One of the things I thought was interesting about this is that uh, this is dual marketed with radiotity. You see the little radiotity guy there and uh, Baofeng. And one of the things I noticed is that the manual is a much better manual than I've come to expect with some of these little Baofeng radios. Uh, they, they, uh, the English is good. They use a lot of white space, so you, it's easy to read. There's, um, and then the icons are fully explained as well as some of the basic functions. And so this is a pretty nice manual to get you started. Here's a quick look at Chirp. This is not intended to be a chirp tutorial, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that you can do. So this is the image file from my UV5R EX radio. Uh, I uploaded this and did it a, a, you know, a, couple, a week or so ago. And so if you look here, you can see there's a tab. Now, if you were to be transferring some of this information from another radio, you could load that in and much like Excel, you can have multiple tabs open across this top bar. To load this from your radio, you would go and hit download from the radio, then select the COM port. As I mentioned, the brand is Radiotity, so you get this 5REX, click OK, and then it would begin the download process from your radio using the uh, proper cable that's plugged into your radio. Once you've got it loaded, then you can do some really interesting things. So first, if we go to the settings, you can see that there are several submenus of settings that you can put into your radio, such as the carrier squelch level, battery saving, colors of the screen, depending upon what the screen's doing and so forth. There are advanced settings, um, the voice that the radio uses, as you can see there, um, a variety of other settings. In this case, I put my call sign and my name on the power on message. So if I go to my FM radio mode in my radio, that's the channel or the frequency that it's going to come up on. DTMF settings, various service settings, and so forth that uh, 
are all available via the menu in the radio, but much easier to deal with here. Memories are the thing that's going to be the big advantage in dealing with this radio. However, as in the most cases, because those are the things that have a variety of uh, entries that have to be entered in for each of the memory channels. And so in this case, you can see I've got some of my local repeaters in these first nine channels. Um, here I've got the various weather channels um, available from NOAA. So depending upon where I am, I can find a weather forecast. Um, here I've got a couple of uh, uh, channels tied into the quartzite area. When I go out for quartz fest, they're in channels in the radio. And then here I've got some radio channels uh, set for satellite, which I plan to use. Uh, one of the reasons I got this radio was to, uh, to try to do some satellite chasing. And so I've got those programmed in as well. Now, one of the things that's really pretty interesting about Chirp is that um, when you go into radio, you can import from a data source. So I could import DMR uh, mark repeaters, not for this radio, it's not a DMR. Um, I can go and import from repeater book. I can do a proximity or a political query. In this case, political means the state or county um, that you might be living in. and It'll give you all that and it'll come up in a separate tab with all the information you need, in which case all you'll need to do is copy and paste it into this display and then import it back into your radio. Here there's an import from stock configuration so you can get the, uh, the weather channels, 60 meter channels, um, and a variety of things. Chirp works across a broad range of radios, so some of these are not going to apply. So here's your US uh, FRS and GMRS channels. If you want to monitor those, you could import them into the radio without having to key all that information. These various um, channels can be dealt with, can be moved around. So for example, if I right click on this, I can move it up, I can move it down, I can delete it uh, and so forth. And then when I import, I can, with that dialog box, import um, at a blank spot. So I could say start importing at space number 11, for example, and then it would move things down. Again, this is not a Chirp tutorial, but you can see that it's really pretty easy. It's a free download uh, and getting your radio set up is just much more easy when you use the customer programming software, in this case, Chirp. I took the radio outside and recorded a QSO off my club's repeater. The repeater is about 11 miles away, and you can hear for yourself what the radio sounds like. WB7VZI monitoring. WB monitoring. WB7VZI Alpha Alpha 7 Juliet Mike. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, how are you today, sir? Very good. The handle here is Ray Romeo Alpha Yankee. Love your uh, love your call sign. That's an original one. I love it. Yeah, Roger that. I uh, vanity call sign that I got uh, when I tested for extra a while back, and so got my initials. Handle here or name here is Jim, and I'm just uh, testing out a new little. El Cheapo Handy Talkie out on my back patio up in kind of northwest Phoenix. Go ahead. Well, you're uh, you're coming in nice and strong. You're about full bars on my end. Little bit of static in the background, but just fuzz. I shouldn't say static, just fuzz. But but it's working out for you. So uh... as you can see. This is a lightweight, easy to carry, dual band, handy talkie. I was able to hit my club's repeater about 10 miles from my home, as well as another repeater about 20 miles away. Sound quality from the speakers is okay, and this was done using the included rubber ducky antenna. You'll also want to order a programming cable from Radio Oddity to connect to your computer. 
Cables can sometimes be a bit finicky, so go with the Radiotity cable to make sure it will work. At this price point, even the newest technician licensee on a tight budget can enjoy some local traffic while deciding what direction to take his or her participation in the hobby. For the experienced ham, this little handy talkie is nearly disposable. It's the kind of radio that's easy to toss in the car, bug out bag, or give to the new ham next door. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and 73.